Hi, I'm Lisa from Lori's Country Cottage. Welcome to How Tuesday. Today I'm going to show you how to attach multiple borders with mitered corners. Let's put some borders on my quilt top. Instead of doing traditional borders, I want to do mitered borders. Sometimes I do mitered borders just to save some time. It is a time saving technique. Also, sometimes when I use a really beautiful print, the mitered borders um, don't show the seams as much. So that's why you would choose to do multiple mitered borders. The first thing you need to do for mitered borders is do the math, quilter's math. And here's how to figure out how much fabric you need for your multiple mitered borders. Mitered borders are done in a completely different technique. So for this project, I have an inner border in turquoise, a middle border of white, and then an outer border again of turquoise. So I'm going to cut my strips exactly like the pattern says. I'm going to join them all in a long row. So I'll have all of my strips of inner border together, all of my strips of middle border together, and then all of my strips of the outside border together. And then I'm going to piece them together. So I will have my inner, middle, and outside border and a giant strip the entire length of the fabric. And here's why we do it. We're going to cut the borders that are already assembled to the appropriate length Sew them on all four sides, leaving those corners, and then we'll miter the corners. So how do I know how long to make those borders? If you have a square quilt, your four borders will be the same size and you'll only have one measurement to use. But this is a rectangular quilt, so we have two measurements, the width and the length. So here's a formula for how long to cut your borders for mitered borders. You need the width of your quilt plus twice the unfinished width of your border plus two to four inches to play around. So my quilt is approximately 39 wide my unfinished border, once I piece the three together, will be eight and a half inches. I need to double that, so it's 17 inches. So the width of my quilt is 39 plus 17, plus I'm gonna add four inches so I don't have to worry. So the width of my quilt, I will cut two 68, 60 inch pieces. And then I'll redo the same math for the length. The length of my quilt, plus two times the unfinished width of the border, plus four inches. So it'll be approximately 53 long. My 17 inches, that's the eight and a half times two, plus four inches, I'll have two lengths of 74 inches for the length of my quilt. So I'm gonna go ahead and piece my borders, my inner, middle, outside border in one long strip. I'm gonna cut it to the appropriate length and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, let's attach those borders. Here are my border strips. I sewed one long strip of my inside border, middle border and outside border and then cut them to the appropriate length for my multiple border mitered corners. All right. The next thing I did was to take each border piece and mark the middle. And then just like you see here, I pinned in the middle and then I use wonder clips to go all the way from the middle to each edge. And then you'll see that you have the extra pieces that allow you to miter your border. So I'll just finish attaching this border with my wonder clips. You can use pins if you like. And then the only other step you need to do 
is on the front of your quilt is to mark a quarter inch in from each quarter corner of your quilt. And here's why. I've attached my two long sides and my short side to my quilt top. And I did that by starting one quarter of an inch in, stitching down the length of the side and stopping a quarter inch away from the edge. And I did that on those three sides. And now I just have to do one more side. So how you do that is you just fold this back, fold, put your border down, and then stitch from the quarter inch all the way and stop a quarter inch from the end. So I'm gonna do that for my last border, and then we're going to miter the borders. All right, I've stitched that last border on. Let's miter the corners. Mitering corners scares people, but I love it and I don't find it hard at all. So let me show you how it's done. Here is the extra fabric from one side and here's the extra fabric from the other side. Sometimes the hardest part is just remembering how to fold your quilt. So what I wanna do is create a di diagonal line from here and fold my quilt right sides together. Then these two tails actually lay together. So this just takes some fiddling, it takes some time, and if you do this part right, your mitered corners are really nice. So the first thing I'm gonna do is lay my borders so that they line up this way. I don't care how long they are, that doesn't need to line up but I want this to be a straight edge and this to be a straight edge. And then I'm going to look at when I do that and then I flatten my quilt, is this a nice diagonal line? Now with the stars on my quilt, it's super easy to see that this goes to this point, to this point, to this point. I have correctly folded my quilt on that diagonal line. And so everything looks good, but we're gonna double check and we're going to shift things if we need to. You're going to need a long ruler for the next step. Don't try and do it with a short ruler. The longer the ruler, the more accurate you are. So I'm just gonna start by laying my ruler along that folded edge. And when I do that, I'm just looking here, it's on my folded edge. Now I wanna see, does it pass through that quarter inch stop where I started and stopped my border? If it doesn't, I need to do a little shifting and mine's off about a stitch. So that's not gonna work. If I stitch on that line, I'm going to have a pucker at that corner. So I just need to shift my diagonal line a wee bit. So I'm gonna do that again line up my strip so it's flat and I'm looking at my quarter inch stitch where I started and stopped my border and now it lines up with that diagonal line. Let's try it again. So again, I'm just gonna lay my ruler on the diagonal line of my fabric and then check, does it go through that quarter inch? Well, now it goes through perfectly. Yeah! and I haven't given myself enough ruler to get to the end of my border. So I'll just slide it down and it's absolutely perfect. This diagonal line goes right through the start and stop of my quarter inch. My borders are lined up. I'm just gonna snug it up just a bit more. And when I think it's perfect, I want this stitching line to line up with the stitching line of the bottom piece because I'm going to stitch and I want them to line up. So now I'll just take a pencil and from that quarter inch mark, draw a line. That's going to be my stitching line. So if you're on dark fabric, use your silver quilter's pencil or a white pen. And now I have it lined up perfectly. I have my line drawn and I'm gonna pin it 
so that nothing shifts. And I'm just gonna look, those seams are perfectly stacked and I don't want them to shift. So I'm going to place a pin. And then I look here, my seams are perfectly stacked and in goes another pin and then just a pin to hold all those layers together. I'm going to do that for the other three corners and then I'm going to stitch from that quarter inch mark where I started and stopped my borders to the outside of the border. Then I'll open it up and see if they're perfect or not. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of adjusting, but let me mark my other three corners, stitch them, and then we'll come back and see how they turn out. All right, I've got my four corners sewn on that mitered angle. So just a note on pressing, you'll see that I haven't pressed this border. Um, for the aesthetics of my quilt, I'd like to press the seam this way toward the dark side, but in order to stitch my mitered corner, um, I need these uh, seam allowances flipped up so that I can see that point to start. So I did not press ahead of time. Once I stitch and check that my seam is nice, I can go ahead and press that any way I want once it's trimmed. So let's see how it turned out. And this seam allowance, you don't cut till you know you're completely happy with your corner. So what I'm looking for here is how well do I match here and how well do I match here? And do I have a pucker at this corner? Keeping in mind that I can do just a tiny bit of manipulation with my iron. So I do have just a wee bit. I feel like that's just the seam allowance running into each other. So I'm really happy with this corner. That matches nicely and that matches nicely. I'll check my other three corners and if I needed to adjust anything, sometimes all you need to do is pick out your first or second stitch. You've just gone a half a hair too close to that corner and sometimes by just releasing one stitch that will lay nice and flat but I'm really happy with this corner. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and trim off this tail so that I just have a quarter inch seam allowance. So why don't I do that now? Because I'm happy with this one. Be very careful not to uh, cut your quilt at this point. Now I can take this to my iron and I'm going to press that, that seam open and it'll be a nice uh, flat seam. And then I can go ahead and press those seam allowances to the outside like, I, like I'd like to so that my seam allowance doesn't show through my white fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and check my other three corners um, and make sure everything lines up. If for instance, on the front of my quilt, this didn't line up nice, I can simply release some stitches, pin on either side and just make sure they line up perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. There we go, my borders are on my quilt. I love how the mitered border turned out. When I first started doing mitered borders I, and mitered corners, I did need to do sometimes just a little bit of fiddling with that corner, but having had some experience, now I'm pretty good at it. I like doing, if I'm doing multiple borders, I like to do mitered borders. I find it a lot easy to sew my strip set, cut it to length that doesn't need to be perfectly accurate, and then just spend a little bit of time on those mitered corners rather than sewing on the inner border, on the sides and the top and the bottom, then the middle border and then the outer border. Uh, so I like putting them on um, as a strip set and it saves some time. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to attach multiple borders with a mitered corner.